Hello! Today I want to show you how I made a brocaded tablet woven band inspired by the Bjerringhøy band from Mammen in Denmark, dated to around 970 AD, putting us right in the Viking Age for Scandinavia and early medieval period for the rest of Europe. The National Museum of Denmark has a picture of this band, which I will show you right about here. And I will also link it in the video description down below, along with a short PDF article I found with some additional details about this band in particular. Silk and precious metal tablet weaving, like I am doing here, was decidedly something that would have been limited to the wealthier parts of society, both for the expense of the materials, but also for how t incredibly time-consuming they are to make. But even though I usually prefer to stick to less fancy projects, sometimes it is fun to get out all the precious materials and do all the fiddly work. I hope you enjoy. The first thing we need to do is to cut our thread into equal lengths for the weaving. This project uses 19 cards with 4 threads in each card, so we need 76 threads for the warp of the brocade. Traditionally, this is done with a warping mill or a warping reel, but since I don't have that, and they can take up an awful lot of space, I use a couple of chairs propped up on a table instead. If you have a particular length of ribbon that you require, you'll need to account for loss of warp to beginning your weave ending your weave, and also a small loss during weaving as the threads move up and down. For most projects, it is usually enough to add half a meter to a meter extra to make sure you have enough warp. This also gives you the opportunity to do some trial and error with your pattern while still being able to start over again and get as much ribbon as you need in the end. All right. So I've gone ahead and cut up my thread and I've tied it off at the other end of the room and I'm now ready to thread my cards. So what you do is you want to grab a card, let's just leave the whole pile out, doesn't matter at this point. Uh, and for this pattern, since the pattern is in the brocade and not in the threads, we have not chosen different color threads here, they're all blue. It doesn't really matter how we thread them, so long as we thread them all from the same side. Uh, anything else we can fix later. When I have finished uh, threading one card, I always, always tie a knot at the bottom end because if you don't do that when you are trying to get to the bottom of your um, strand of thread so that you get as much weaving out of your pack as possible they're all just the three cards are just and all your work is just going to fall off and all your work is going to have been in vain and you're going to have to do it again and when you have a card like this you see that all the threads come in on one side and come out at the bottom That was tedious. Uh, <laughs> this part is always my fa least favorite part and it always looks a mess, but don't worry, it's gonna even out. Uh, and also, while it is okay that it looks like a mess when you're doing it, I do recommend trying to do it in one sitting, so don't leave this tangly mess to become even more tangled. Uh, try to... Um, gather it up and do everything at once and then we can tie it up and make it a little more um, neat. So now everything is not actually the way I want it. Uh, I want it to be five brown cards and then three brown, and then a white, and three, and five. If I can count, yeah, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, good. 
Um, so that's the order of the cards. Uh, now we do care about the direction of the cards, uh, but we can fix this um, here. So I'm first going to make sure all the cards are facing the same way because that's nice. You don't have to do this if your cards aren't wood, but I like it. It also gives me a visual indication straight away if any of my cards are out of alignment or anywhere they shouldn't be. So it's easy for me to fix that as I go. And now I want my cards to be... So this is kind of difficult when you look at it, but if you look at it from above you sort of if you have some imagination you see that this one comes from the top goes like this and then diagonally to the right and goes down um, I think they call this Z threading different books vary on what they call like Z and what they call S um, so you always need to check in the front of the book how they, they define it. But if we say that going in from the left side and coming out on the right side is Z, then we want a pattern that is alternating uh, Z, S, Z, S, Z, S. So this one comes from the left and comes out on the right side. Um, that means that the next one I want to... Oh, that's lucky. This one already was. Uh, I want the next one to... Ooh, I'm dropping my cards. Uh, I want the next one to come in from the right side and come out on the left side. Uh, I don't have any references on how the band, uh, the cardboard woven bat I'm trying to reproduce was threaded, but this produces a very strong weave that doesn't curl back in on itself. Um, it will look reminiscent of herringbone if he was just doing it without the brocade on top. The brocade is going to hide it anyway, so again, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but this, again, makes sure that you don't get a ribbon that wants to like spiral in on itself. Uh, and it'll be nice and strong. No, this one. Oh, we finally have one that's different. So when you have a card that is not the direction you want it to be, you can just flip it 90 degrees clockwise or counterclockwise, whichever makes it, you know, loosen up and not make a wound ball on itself. And then you just continue. This was unusually lucky. I'm not sure that I've ever had a deck of cards just up. Oh, there's another one that actually wasn't the way it was supposed to be. So just fold it up towards the thread and then down again and it'll be the other direction whichever that is so now my cards are the, the right way but my silk is still a bit of a mess but I'm gonna grab my safety needle that I talked about previously and I'm gonna secure um, my cards so that they are stable and then I'm gonna go ahead and start sort of combing and unwinding and getting it as far down as I can with sort of this knots that I made at the bottom. Um, this can be a little bit tedious, but it's worth doing because the further down on your strands you get, the more you get out of your uh, the thread that you've spent so long now uh, cutting and winding and threading. So I'd like to get it as far down as I possibly can. Uh, and then I'm just going to wound up a shuttle with blue thread and then we're ready to weave. Hello! This is your friendly neighborhood health and safety, Christine. When you are weaving with the backstrap method like I am doing here, you want to take great care not to tie it around your natural waist because that will create a lot of unnecessary strain onto your back and spine. But when the weaving is pushing you forward, you can see here it hits my small back almost perfectly, which in the long run, if you're weaving a lot, is just a recipe for chronic health issues and back pain. Zero out of ten would not recommend. 
What to do instead is to untie it and retie it around where your hips are widest. Your hips are much stronger and less uh, prone to chronic injury. And when you do this, you can even push it even further down so you sit on it, which would lead to no strain on your back and all the strain just being sat on with no problem for you in the long run. All right, let's get to the actual weaving part. Um, to fasten the piece of thread, the project, to my waistband, um, I'm using this nifty little thing, but don't worry if you don't have one of these, you can just tie this knot on the end to the waistband that you're using or, you know, with a safety pin or another small piece of thread. Uh, but if you have one of these, it does help make your project a little straighter, uh, a little uh, neater, which is nice when we're doing something as um, fine as brocade. So the way that it works is just you open it up in the middle and you pass the knot at the bottom of this over the top and up in the middle so now when our weaving wants to go that way and this is fastened in our belt it doesn't go anywhere so before we get to the actual brocading part uh, i like to just start a little bit and you do that by turning all the cards once clockwise. Let's get ready to start with the pretty stuff. So now we have, mm, let's say about a centimeter uh, down here that is actually woven, that isn't just loose thread. So if I wanted to actually brocade this section now, I don't. I put, I turn the cards once, like you saw, and I pull my regular shuttle through, and I put that on the side, and then I fetch my brocading thread. Uh, silver in this case and the way that you read the pattern let's see if we can sneak the pattern in here is here we have the edge uh, I could have drawn this in I am going to draw this completely without like um, I'm going to draw this out completely in the um, file that I provide you and not just have like the edges as a note on the side here but what you do is that okay for the brown that's going to be no brocade so the first two cards are going to be no brocade and then two um two cards are going to be brocade no brocade and if we start down here it's going to be no brocade and three and one and three and then one plus the one and two and two that we have here. So you just take a hold of, so two were not gonna be brocaded. We grab those, we push those up, and then two were gonna be brocaded, we ignore those. Then one was gonna be brocaded. This is our edge, this is always gonna be like this. And then our pattern for this one, we had one not brocaded, three brocaded, one, and three, and one, and then the edges are always the same, one, two, and one. So now these bottom bits are the ones that I want to brocade. That means that I'm gonna pull, I'm gonna grab the top threads here, ignore these, and the top threads here, ignore these, the top threads here, top threads, and the top threads. 
So now I have in my hand only the top two threads of these cards of the ones that we said were going to be not brocaded. And I take my little shuttle and I pass it under in addition to the other thread at the bottom. And then we need to be a bit careful because the silver is a bit flimsy. We pull it shut like so. And that's the first around of the pattern clear. Now we turn again to secure everything. And again we go with the blue first. And so it is after many, many, many hours of weaving and YouTube costumers and other distractions, it is finally, finally finished. I hope you enjoyed this little video and maybe leave a comment if you have any questions and I'll see you again soon. Bye!